Today's video is brought to you by PickDrop. Click on the link below to get your free trial of this photo sharing service. How's it, how's it? The other day I was in Cambridge with a group of photographers doing a photo walk. And, and it was great fun because it's always nice to be with, you know, other photographers. And one of the guys had a Leica, one of the, the more modern Leicas, which he was extremely proud of. You know, he'd saved up and he was like, oh, I've got this Leica, but he, you know, I like it. I, I like my Leica, <laughs> right? And I thought that, you know, that's fantastic. It's nice to see somebody who has a camera that excites them, makes them want to go and take photographs. But something interesting happened when we were out and about taking pictures. For some reason, I asked him if I could look through his viewfinder, just to, I think to see what he was seeing. And I, I held the camera in my hand and I was like, this is bizarre. I, I do like Leicas. I used to own a, a Leica 3F with an old screw mount and I loved holding it. It just, it just the, the feel of it in my hands made me want to go and take photographs. And yet I held up this Leica and I, I didn't feel anything. It just, you know, it, it just, it didn't resonate with me at all. And it got me thinking on the way home about something that never anybody talks about. Now, as you may know about me on this channel, I don't really talk about equipment too much. I might talk about some lenses from time to time, but nothing approaching like a gear review or, or anything like that. You know, that's totally not the, the approach of the channel. But as I was driving back, I was thinking about my own history with, with cameras. And my first camera was a Canon A1. And I have a book here called The History of Photography in 50 Cameras. And there on this page is a Canon A1. I look at it now and I can remember the way that it sounds. I remember the feel of, of the, the little, uh, you know, the grip that you had on there. The sound of the motor drive, I had a little Canon motor drive put on the bottom of a power winder, actually, it wasn't a motor drive. And that camera made me excited. It, you know, it made me want to go out and take photographs. And none of my current cameras do that. I, I, you know, I go, I want to go out and take photographs and what have you, but I don't pick up a camera and, and it puts a smile on my face. None of the cameras that I currently have do that. I've never sort of gone, ah, oh, I love the feel of it. I love the smell. I love the way that it sounds. They all just feel, and you can see I'm sort of grasping for a word here, but they feel empty. Like they lack a personality of their own. Now this is not a film is better than digital or, you know, my camera's better than your camera kind of discussion. It's more about, the right camera for me and for you isn't about numbers or its resolution or what it does or its functions. It's, I, I feel, about how it makes you as the photographer feel. So the guy in Cambridge, you know, he's got this like, he's happy. He's like, oh, I dig it. You know, it's kind of cool. And it makes him excited to go and take photographs. And so that's a good thing. I... You know, I'm thinking about, you know, what cameras would I like to have next? You know, I, I do, I look, I, I like cameras as much as the next person, but I like different aspects of cameras. I like old cameras. You know, I've got the, the Canon A1. I'm, I, unfortunately, my, A, my original A1 was, was stolen years ago. And, and I've had a couple since then, but currently I don't have one. And I'm thinking maybe I might want to go and buy one. Not because it's going to reconnect me with analog and so much better than, than digital, it's more real photography. It's none of that, right? It, it objectively doesn't do things as well as modern cameras. But I want to pick up a camera for a change that puts a grin on my dial. <laughs> for, for want of a, a want of a better word, and there's another one here. You know, this is a uh, this is actually a Hasselblad 1600F, but it's it's close. I mean, it looks like a 500C, and it looks like a CF, right? That's another camera that I loved, and again, I sold it because I'm an idiot, <laughs> right? But I remember looking through it, and, it, and again, you know, the lenses. Okay, the lenses are kind of cool, but it has silver lens. It wasn't like the super sharp ones and all that kind of stuff. But when I looked through the waist lever finder, 
it was it was like a whole another world. That was a, a completely different way of taking photographs that made me excited to take a picture. It, it's a very weird realization that I came to that I need to have a, a camera that that makes me excited if I'm feeling in a slump. I don't, you know, this is, again, it's not I'm going to sit there and go, you know, you need to go off and buy a camera that makes you happy or something like that. But I do think it's something worth considering if you are finding maybe like the the approach of photography is kind of maybe wearing you down a little bit. That, you know, a lot of people I think will go, oh, we'll get a new lens because it will let me to do things and get me excited. And and for a long time, I've kind of go, well, you know, the new lens is not going to make you a better photographer. However, if that new lens or that new camera makes you smile, you know, makes you go, ah, this is kind of cool, I'm excited, and it gets you out of taking photographs, then at least you're getting out there taking photographs. I remember recently in the previous cohort, the next cohort is going to start next week. So actually, if you, you know, there's one or two spaces left. So if you want to join the links in the description, I had a photographer come and speak to, to the guys called Obi Oberhalter. Now, I've loved his photography for forever, basically. And, and it's been so, it's been a great pleasure of mine to be able to actually, you know, sit and chat with him and, and, and talk about photography. And he was talking to, to the guys in the cohort. And he has this great expression. He says, if you go, you get. And that was, I think, like a little penny drop thing. Because you can't, you know, I, I look, I'm here, obviously, sitting talking to you about photography and say you need to you know, be excited about taking pictures. And if, and if a camera does that for you, then it's fulfilled, it's brief. But you still need to get off your backside. I need to get off my backside and get out there and take some pictures. Because once you go, you get the pictures. Right, <laughs> that's kind of one of these weird problems about being being a YouTube photographer. It's it's that sort of thing, and and I think if you spend, say, so if I you know if I if I put myself in the in the shoes of somebody who is coming to photography from 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 completely outside, or is you know sort of coming back to it from from years off, and and looks at cameras and goes, ah, okay, well I've got this review and that review, and they're talking about those pixels and the mega D dads and you know all that kind of all the the technical uh, you know data that you're trying to make a comparison find which one is the best you know which one has the most megapixels which one has the best sensor which has that and you might pick up that camera and it just leaves you cold right it's, it, I think probably a, a great way of describing this is, is like cars okay so I currently drive BMW because for whatever reason, BMW has lodged itself in my head as a brand that makes me smile, okay? And my current car, I get into it and, it, and it, I still enjoy driving it. I get into my wife's car and I'm like, oh, do not like this, right? They both do the basically the same thing. Okay, fine, my car can go faster than, than you know, Shana's car, but we can't drive. <laughs> there is a speed limit, right? So her car will do the same speed as my car, right? And maybe there's one or two little things that does slightly differently. But ultimately, it gets the same result, right? And I thought, you know, I'd, I have this thing where I would like to have a 1969 Camaro SS, right? That's my, like, dream car. Now, you can, st you can buy a Camaro now. You can buy a new Camaro. But, and that new Camaro is objectively better in every single way than the older one, it doesn't eat oil, it doesn't have, you know, a crumple zone that is your legs, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff. But I don't really want to drive the new one because I can't see myself sitting in a new one with a smile on my face. I want to have that feel around me of, of mechanicalness, mechanicalness, <laughs> mechanicalness of the car itself. It's, and I suppose that's like the same with me with, with film cameras the canon made a distinctive noise it felt had bits the the like of the 3f it, it you could feel the person machining this you know putting it together the the hassle black the clink clunk you're taking the back off this slide the whole it was very tactile so that appealed to me 
But if you are, say, somebody who's a bit more scientific, a bit more analytic, you like kind of clean modern lines, then you, I can imagine how something like a Leica, modern Leica, which is very minimalist, would, would appeal. So think about that, you know, the next time that you are, you know, on the fence about maybe buying some new gear or things of that nature, it's like, can you go and pick this up? Does it make you smart? Or are you just kind of buying into, you know, a, a, a camera arms race? as it were. I know right now some of you are kind of going, what? <laughs> Alex has spent the whole video talking about gear. And obviously, you know, gear is a part of photography. But I just, I, I thought it would be time just to you know, kind of think about a hidden aspect of, of camera equipment that nobody ever really kind of talks about. If you'd like to get one of those last spots for the cohort and really develop your, your photographic eye so you can make the most of the camera equipment that you have, check on the link in the description box below and I will see you again next week. Look at this video here for more inspiration about photography. Thanks again and I will see you.